So, sadly, House of the Dragon Season 2 is already halfway done. I know, it's crazy we've been waiting for this for like 2 years and it's almost already out the door. Shout out Hudor. And it's just sad, it's kinda like that one family member who goes to prison for 2 years, comes back for 2 months, and is already selling crack to teenagers and is sent back to prison in 2 months. You know what I mean? But yeah, as most of you know I am a diehard Game of Thrones A Song of Ice and Fire fan. I even have a video coming out next week on the Winds of Winter book for the Game of Thrones timeline. So needless to say, when it comes to the House of the Dragon universe, I am I, I know I am the Alpha. I'm, I'm the Sigma. I know what I'm doing among these streets. And with it halfway being done already, let's do a mid-season review. Because we have a lot of good, some bad, and definitely some ugly when it comes to House of the Dragon Season 2. But let's start off with the good. I mean, where does a real one even start when it comes to the good? Or should I say the greatness of the first couple episodes? I mean, literally in the opening seconds, we saw Craig and Stark. And not just that, but we got to see the wall. And not just that, we got to hear the Stark theme again. Oh man, this sent me this sent me back. Like hearing the Stark theme in 2024 is like hearing the OG Fortnite music after 2019. Like it gave me such euphoria. And it had even the most manly men in tears. And so far the pacing of season 2 is so much better than season 1. In season 1 you would see a new character who was like a child and they would go to the washroom and when they come back they're 4 years older and then they would go in the kitchen and eat and now they're 10 years older. It's like god damn man what kind of witchcraft do you, do you got in Westeros? Dragons don't do that to people. But in season 2, there's none of that BS. It's pretty well paced. I wouldn't say it's perfectly paced like Game of Thrones seasons 2 to 4, but it's still fantastic. But now let's get into some controversy. We got blood and cheese. I'm gonna be honest, I'm pretty satisfied with what we got. Now sure, is it as brutal and as heart twisting as it was in the books? Nah. The books were like some horror movie stuff you see only in the deepest and darkest of minds. Like what has George R.R. Martin gone through to write something as crazy as this, god damn. But the show version worked for me. I'm not as mad as that we didn't get to see the gory stuff. Which is fine, because that was never really what happened in like Game of Thrones either. In Game of Thrones it was mainly Oberyn's death and those Theon scenes that really felt like oh this is a dark web fantasy book girl talk weird gore stuff. So I was fine with what we've got with blood and cheese because of that. While Game of Thrones has had a lot of on-screen violence in the past, that doesn't necessarily characterize and define the show. If anything, some of the biggest moments like Ned Stark's execution cuts away before we see the gore, and the creators opt to show Arya's reaction in place of that. I'd argue that the writing surrounding these major moments and the emotion of them is what defines and makes them outstanding. And the same applies to Blood and Cheese. Now Team Green is, is masterfully written. And this is coming from someone who is Team Black because I'm always Team Black because of, you know, Black Lives Matter and stuff. But Helena, Allison, Kristen, Otto, Aegon, Aemond, these mofos are so entertaining. And yeah, don't worry, I'll talk about Team Black later on too. But man, Team Green is, is literally the dumber version of like the Lannisters and it's amazing. Allison actually having some like redeeming moments is something that I loved. Helena going through so much pain makes me constantly sad every time she's on screen. Like even when she comes on screen, it's just like a gut twisting feeling I get because I don't want her to like suffer anymore. Aegon and Aemon being on the edge is amazing. Like that scene where Aemon is uh, being a good boy and suckling on his stepmommy's breast and showing the camera his Godzilla cock that uh, that actually got me kind of jealous. And Aegon just bullying him was just so intense. And it really gave me Lannister vibes. And then there's Kristen Cole. Oh my god, you have no idea how much I hate this man. But man, every scene he's in is, is exactly like Joffrey or Tywin in early Game of Thrones. Where it's like, I want you to die. But I also want you to stay on my screen forever because how entertaining you are. I also find it hilarious how 
No one wants Kristen Cole's baby. Both the young Rhaenyra and Alicent take birth control right after. But hey, if you get to shag young Rhaenyra and Alicent, you might be, you might, you're winning in life, you know, you, you're the luckiest man on the planet. And yeah, as much as I hate him when he almost died at the end of episode 4, I was like, yes. Then I was like, no. But why did you open your eyes? The episode was already a 10 out of 10. And yeah, this episode is, is peak. I mean, you got the dragon battle. I mean, come on. Finally, we get some like insane dance of dragons level stuff. And I loved how they did it. The behind the scenes was crazy on this battle. The production value is excellent, and they've even improved on the Dragon Buck filming tech. Like now, they have this robotic arm that can perfectly track its subject, while keeping a specific type of shot frame to a T. Just watching the behind the scenes for that alone, I found to be extremely intriguing. Fuck me sideways! <laughs> it seems much more complicated than Game of Thrones, and from this advancement in tech, it allows the creators to achieve higher quality storytelling, since there are practically no more limitations. This is easily my top two House of the Dragon episodes. I'm not sure if it beats Lord of the Tides. That episode had everything. It had amazing dynamics and the aim and dinner scene. Viserys walking to the throne room while dying of AIDS. But I wouldn't be surprised when I rewatched both seasons probably later on this year. Episode 4 season 2 is going to be higher on this list and it's already second so it's only going to be number one. It's almost a perfect episode. There are some flaws, like Vagar turning into John Cena and stealth attacking Rhaenys. And a lot of stuff did happen very convenient timing. It's kind of like the Battle of the Bastards episode from Game of Thrones where it's like plot armor and plot holes are kind of easily ignored. But I wouldn't say the Battle in House of the Dragon was as controversial. It was so much more forgivable and a lot better. Even before the battle, I loved that episode, like Allison telling Aegon, yeah, Aegon, you, you, ain't, you ain't him, bro. You nothing. You're just a mistake. And Aegon goes drunk dragon riding and doesn't even get like a DUI like me. Like, this is the equivalent of like Kim Jong-un driving a nuclear tank to America. <laughs> and yeah, this episode also had uh, Damon doing some crazy stuff. He's basically Tommy Shelby this season. I have no idea what's actually gonna come out of this like Damon arc. Like, anything could happen. Like, maybe through those visions and arc he finds out he's gay and comes out of the closet i don't know but yeah this this was phenomenal there's so much more i can say about the greatness of season two but i don't want, i don't want to waste your time so let's get into the bad and later on the ugly now there's only two things that kind of i think are bad and when I mean bad, I don't mean like absolutely like unforgivable. I'll talk about the unforgivable things later on in the video. But when I mean these things are bad, I mean I mean it's more like a B minus or like a C plus grade, you know? Like you might get into college with those grades. But your dumbass is definitely ain't gonna invent something to take us to Jupiter, you know? And one of those things are the Team Black characters. And the other is the Eric and Eric fight. Let's talk about the fight of the twins first. The fight itself was really good. This episode was good. The conflict was great. But it was great for me because I am a I'm deep into the lore, you know. I kind of I, I kind of knew what was going to happen and I know what Arthur George R R Martin was going for. But for the people who may have forgotten who these characters were, this may have felt really really like rushed. It could have been a lot better. And the main thing that hurts this scene and lessens its impact is that we don't ever really get to know Eric and Eric. They have virtually no buildup, and if you're working to a point where they have an explosive and emotional confrontation, then I feel like it would be pretty critical to establish them as actual characters that the audience cares about. It's kind of like the Aldi conundrum where he's essentially a non-character who receives barely any development. However, that scene was still impactful since it was more than just Ollie's relationship with John. For this scene though, it entirely rides on the relationship between these two brothers, and since it was very underdeveloped, I just didn't really care about them that much like i still i still really liked it but it could have been 100 times better if they just fleshed them out more or lady just giving them more screen time but the other thing that is really bad but not terrible is most of team black like they are they're just they're just too normal and they're just too professional damon is the only one that feels explosive and he's not even gonna be there half the time again i love both teams but I, but i want team black to win but Rhaenyra is not doing much. Like in season 1, she was far from like a damsel in distress. 
she was badass as hell and was literally playing the Game of Thrones in some of the most trickiest and unimaginable ways possible. Like she literally walked to Allison's room immediately after birth and kept a poker face on the entire time. Like damn. But this season they want to make you like her so much to the point where it's almost like Tyrion in season 5. Where both Tyrion and Rhaenyra were, were the fan favorites. So instead of giving them like some great characteristics, they instead just make them like good people and they just do things that George R. R. Martin would probably never want them to do. Which that part actually leads me to the ugly. Now the ugly. Oh man, let's uh, let's talk about it. Because it is some of the most diabolical stuff I've seen in years. The Rhaenyra Disguise Mission. This woman turned into Altair from Assassin's Creed 1. We work in the dark to serve the light. We are assassins. What was this woman thinking? Or what was the writing team thinking? Did David and Dan write this? Like what? This is the equivalent of Game of Thrones Season 7 where Tyrion enters King's Landing to talk to Jaime. Literally the exact same. This is the most unprofessional stuff I've seen in my day. I honestly got flashbacks to Game of Thrones Season 7 when I saw this. And I got even more flashbacks to Assassin's Creed stealth missions. Like there's no world where Alison wouldn't have called the guards after she left if Rhaenyra didn't have insane amount of plot armor. Like come on. This entire thing feels like a GTA mission or like yeah an Assassin's Creed mission. Man was this bad writing. Alison literally could have ended this war the moment she left. Or at least keep Rhaenyra hostage. And then maybe keep her as a ward like Theon. And then keep the peace. But no, we instead get terrible writing and plot armor, but whatever. At least the next episode immediately hit an insane peak that made me kind of forget how awful the episode 3 ending was. But yeah, overall, I love the season, man. I can't wait to make a full season review at the end of the season. And after a few months, I'll probably make a, like a 40 minute video essay on this entire season as well. So yeah, make sure to like and subscribe for that. And yeah, take it easy, man. Peace, peace.